Hi everyone, this is Clint Lanier, Professor of Rhetoric and Professional Communication at New Mexico State University. Today we're going to talk about Facebook credibility and crisis communication. I'd like to start out by giving a little bit of background about the project and uh, then discuss the primary question that kind of leads into the rest of it. This is related to past work and past studies on website credibility that I've conducted over the last uh, at least two or three years. Uh, two or three years ago, I became interested in this because a lot of uh, industry organizations were trying to move their content from standard manuals to online uh, platforms. And I wanted to help them figure out a way to increase the credibility of their own content so that if a user was looking at uh, two or three or four different uh, online documentation systems, theirs would be chosen above uh, any of the others, any, uh, especially the user-generated content. So uh, I decided to, to look at Facebook based on um, really crisis communication. And the question that kind of guides this research is how can orga organizations ensure their communication about a crisis is considered credible when that communication occurs on Facebook? So there's a lot of moving parts to this, this project, and uh, I could certainly use all the help that I can get um, in, 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 in trying to figure out how best to conduct this, this project. But first, let's start with some definitions. And the first definition is credibility. What do I mean by that? It's the extent to which an audience finds content trustworthy. And there are various aspects in, in when it comes to credibility. There is, for example, information credibility. So how, how credible or how trustworthy is the information itself? There's also credibility about the speaker or the author of whatever communication it, it might be. And also credibility about the organization. So, for example, if I write uh, an entry on behalf of my university, uh, it'll be judged in three ways. Not only will the post itself be judged for its credibility, but so will I as, a, as the author of that content. Uh, and also the institution, Mexico State University, will be judged based on its credibility. So uh, there are various aspects that users take to uh, when they judge the credibility of online information. And they do it instantaneously. Uh, they do it in, in kind of real time uh, simply by looking at the post. The next definition is of crisis communication. What do I mean by that? So there are messages that relay important information about a potentially dangerous situation to a particular audience. And I say dangerous, but could also be an emergency situation to a particular audience. Now, this is in contrast to crisis communication that you might see in industry when, for example, uh, there is a bad PR look at Starbucks. For example, they, they kick out or they have a patron arrested or something. They talk about crisis communication in that aspect. And that is one definition, but that's not the definition that I'm using here. I'm talking about it specifically for in the cases of, of emergencies, so natural disasters, for example, uh, maybe terrorist events or anything like that. Okay, any type of, of emergency situation or, or crises that, that uh, officials, governmental organizations have to communicate about. Okay? And there are different types of messages that occur just like there are different types of credibility. For example, uh, there are reports about the event itself, what is happening, where it's happening. Uh, there are also there's also communication about responses to the events uh, and coordination to the event. So all of these things might happen at any given time, and all of this kind of falls under the umbrella of crisis communication. Now, why is Facebook, why am I concerned with Facebook when it comes to crisis communication? Well, mainly because there's an increasing use of Facebook as a news source. There are currently 2.32 billion monthly active users on Facebook. So these are people that, that log in every month and perform some type of activity on Facebook. Out of these, there are 1.52 da billion daily active users. Uh, this is according to the third quarter, quarter of 2018 uh, and according to Facebook itself. So a slew of people. It's by far and away uh, one of the largest social media platforms uh, in the world, certainly in the West, as 68% of Americans currently use Facebook. So um, well over half, almost all uh, American uh, have some type of profile. Now about this statistic, I could not find whether this statistic combined 
all of Facebook's different app properties. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it combines Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger all in one, or if they're just talking about Facebook proper. But in either case, 68% of Americans uh, use Facebook in some, some manner. And 43% of Americans get their news from Facebook, or at least some of their news from Facebook. And this is in a lot of different ways from a lot of different places. So this includes the news feed, kind of in the middle, and it includes shared stories or articles or links from news organizations, from their friends, from family members, people they're connected to, and groups that they, that they might belong to and pages that they follow. So a lot of different ways they're getting their information from Facebook. And finally, 4.75 billion pieces of content are shared daily. Now that's as of 2013, so it's kind of an old statistic, but they we haven't really seen any update to that according to Facebook. Now, as far as what kind of content that is, it's it's everything you can do on Facebook. So it's likes, shares, comments. It's also uh, links, uh, images, and videos. So everything in, in Facebook. Now, this is daily. So 1.52 billion daily active users share 4.75 billion pieces of content every single day. So the reason why Facebook is, is the platform that I'm thinking about when it comes to, to crisis communication is it is just so used. It is used by so many people, and there's so much content on there, and there's so so there's uh, uh, so much potential for sharing information, especially important information. And Facebook is not, that makes Facebook an ideal communication platform during a crisis, especially since all major American corporations, local, state, and federal government offices can have Facebook presences. Now, I'm not saying that they all do. But they certainly can have a Facebook page, and they could do it for free, uh, and and they can start uh, messaging for free out uh, from those pages. Information is also easy to share uh, quickly in disparate areas. So, if somebody is in a remote area, where say a crisis or an emergency occurred, they can send information out via a mobile phone if they have access to a data network. Okay. Likewise, crisis coordination can occur rapidly in defined networks. So what I mean by defined networks is when you send out a post or when you post to, to Facebook, you have the option of sending it to certain people. Now, as individuals on in our personal profile, we can send it, for example, to our public news feed, or we can send it to just certain friends, or we can send it to groups. In other words, we can post this information to people that we specifically want to post to. Organizations can do the same thing. So in coordination of efforts, if you have a team that's managing a response to an emergency or to a crisis, you can only choose to share information with those team members. So in other words, not everybody out there. And that information can be controlled by crisis management teams, uh, which makes it very appealing. Uh, as we all know, 15 years ago, there were gatekeepers to sharing information. In other words, if I wanted to get information out about a crisis, about a response to a crisis, about an emergency, I would typically have to contact the local newspapers or various journalists and have them relay that information to the public. Well, it doesn't work like that anymore in that there are no more gatekeepers, especially with Facebook. I can put information out there directly to my page, send it out to my, my likes and my followers and my friends without having to worry about anybody else filtering that message. So I get my, my message completely out there immediately. Facebook also ha already has a history of being used during crisis, and it's a well-documented and researched history. Uh, it was used in the, the response to the Haiti earthquake for aid response and coordination of, of aid um, deployment. The same with the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Not only did they coordinate uh, disaster response, but also... Uh, they kept track of where it was safe to enter, where it was not safe to enter, places that needed to be evacuated, places where workers could, could go in for cleanup, and places where they shouldn't go in at all. And then finally, Hurricane Sandy, which happened recently, uh, there was coordination, again, event coordination, uh, informing the public about things like blackouts, uh, where energy, or I'm sorry, where, where power was out, and where coordination of, of aid effort was taking place. So it already has this kind of long entrenched history of being used for this type of information. However, there's a problem, and the, the problem itself is the platform. You see, 57% of Americans who get their news from Facebook expect that news that's shared to be inaccurate. Now, that's 
of the 43% who get their news from Facebook, okay? So it's not 57% of all Americans, but well over half of that 43%. So we're talking well over 20% of Americans uh, expect the news that's shared on, on Facebook to be inaccurate. So almost a quarter of the people, well, almost a quarter of the population, and they see news on Facebook, they already expect it somehow to be inaccurate. And that's that's certainly a credibility problem for the platform. Also, 51% of Americans generally do not trust the platform itself. And we see this as a response to everything that happened in the 2016 presidential election, plus stuff before, stuff since, right? Cambridge Analytica, where they were uh, taking user information and sharing that user information with third parties, uh, that certainly gave them a black eye. But also, there's been user data breaches uh, off and on for Facebook. They've had a recurring problem with these things. And all those things have, have uh, added to the mistrust of the platform, and, it, and it's causing, again, a credibility problem for the platform itself. And finally, the fake news phenomenon. So Facebook itself is the biggest distributor of fake news uh, in, in, in the country, according to research. So they share, well, fake news rather, is shared on Facebook more than anywhere else. Now, real quickly, just as a differentiation, there's a difference between fake news, misinformation, hoaxes, and, and fraud. Fake news is information that is, that is designed knowingly by someone in order to uh, deceive a different party for the purpose of persuading those people uh, over to to the, the the ideology or the side of the person that, that created it in the first place. Misinformation is different because when misinformation is shared, the people that are sharing it do not understand that it's misinformation. So this might be somebody who sees the fake news and who believes the fake news and then shares it uh, because they're not in on, on the deception. A uh, hoax is typically uh, misinformation or fake information that's put out deceptively for some particular purpose, maybe for a joke or, or usually to get some type of reaction from, from different parties. Fraud is similar to hoax. However, there's an element of economics involved. In other words, they're trying to cheat people out of money or, or something like that, okay? So anyway, back to the point is that fake news um, because of fake news, because of the 2016 election, because of Cambridge Analytica, because of all these different factors, Facebook is is simply not trusted. So there is potential that important posts may be disregarded if they're deemed not credible. And that's what worries me. What worries me is that when you see an inf uh, a, a post that's shared about a missing teenager, people will uh, be skeptical, skeptical of that post will not themselves share it, nor will they take any action on the post itself because they are skeptical, they are, are they do not find that post credible for a lot of various reasons. One of the main being because it's on Facebook. So how do we solve that? And by uh, the pl first place to start is to figure out what creates credibility on Facebook. And this is information taken from a lot of different studies that I hope to contribute to uh, further on down the road. The first thing to look at is the information source. People look at the information source before they look at anything else. The information source is essentially who it was that shared this. Was it a friend who shared this? Was it my mom who shared this? Was it somebody at work that I don't really like who shared this? That is the biggest indicator of whether information is found credible or not, um, is, is who shared it. So if it's somebody that a user knows, a user trusts, a user likes, well, then they're, they're more apt to find that information credible than otherwise. However, if it's being shared by people they don't like, people that they don't trust, or people who they know ha have an agenda, they are, they are less apt to believe that information and less apt to find it credible. Now, there's another source for that information, and that's what they call the sponsor of the information, okay? This is different than the source that's sharing the information. So if uh, the my local police department creates a post and places it up on, on their wall and that post then gets shared by a friend of mine and I see it, the source of that information, the, uh, excuse me, the person sharing that information is my friend. However, the sponsor of that information is the police department. So do two different things. And what they found was that there's 
the sponsor or the creator of that information is much less important than the person who's actually sharing the information. So it's very interesting if you think about this. And this is one of the reasons that fake news is so easily spread because regardless of who actually made or designed that post or created that information, if it's shared by somebody that I like or that I know or who I find credible, I am more apt to believe that post just because of who shared it. So that's one thing to look at. Another thing is the perceived sponsor motives. So if I do look at the sponsor, one thing that I that I automatically weigh, and again, this happens in, in, in almost real, well, it happens in real time. It happens synchronously with with seeing the 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 the, uh, the post itself, I'm automatically going to look at that sponsor and, and try to figure out what are their motives, okay? And let's say you fall on one side of the political spectrum or another, you might perceive different motives in the same post, whether it's shared by MSNBC or Fox, just because, I'm sorry, whether it was created by MSNBC or Fox. There are two very different uh, news sources that are at very different ends of the aisle. Now, both of them can be thought credible, and both of them have been counted credible uh, by various, you know, uh, various research studies in the past. However, if I land on one side of the political aisle and I see a, a post by uh, a news source from, say, the opposing side of the aisle, I will obviously find it less credible because I think they have an agenda or I think they have a motive and that's to try to sway me to their side. Next is information quality, the accuracy, clarity, and timeliness of that information. Uh, accuracy simply means whether that information is, is fully accurate, whether I deem it as being fully accurate. So does it have enough detail for the level of information that it's giving? Also something simple, is it grammatically correct? Is it structured correctly? Is it clear? Is the information uh, clear and easy to understand? And then finally, is it is it timely? Does it really have anything to do with what's going on? So if there's a disaster or an emergency or, or something like that, and there's a post about that, that particular event, is it timely? Does it actually match what the uh, what what event is is happening and, and and so forth? Now, finally, there are internal factors, and these are things that we as information designers really have no control over. So, uh, for example, people have a motivation to believe information, and that will have a lot to do with the, with how credible they find that information. Uh, politics is the easiest example I can give. If somebody is already uh, predisposed to believing that all conservatives are bad or perhaps that all liberals are bad, when they see a, a post that uh, confirms their belief, they are more likely to, to believe that information because they're already motivated to believe it. And also, if it aligns with their own beliefs, they are, again, more likely to find it credible. This is why fake news is so pervasive. This is why it's so hard to stop. Uh, because not only do we have these internal factors, this motivation to believe, especially if it aligns with our own beliefs, uh, but we have created our own little tribes. We live in vacuums on Facebook, especially, where people that we allow into our circle really only believe what we believe. So all we're seeing is stuff that aligns with our own beliefs um, and stuff that we're already motivated to believe in the first place. So this makes it really, really difficult to create credibility on Facebook. Um, so especially if you have an organization that is not trusted, say uh, ICE, for example, um, Immigration and Custom Enforcement, um, they are not trusted by, a, a, you know, I would say a sizable portion of the population. So if they put information out there about some crisis or some event, how likely is it that they're going to be found not to be credible by that certain uh, population, by, by a certain portion of the population. And if it's an important announcement, if it's an emergency or crisis, and if they have to uh, coordinate a response to that event, then you can see how important it is that they are found credible. So how do we do that? Well, this is all speculation. I haven't tested any of this part. This is the next part of, of, of my program where I'm going to test this stuff. But these are all really hypotheses. This is my what I'm theorizing here. And this is based on the research that's already been done, but it's also based on the research that I did with, with websites uh, to, to figure out what, what makes them credible. First things first is we need to ensure trust in the sponsor. I mean, that's fairly obvious. There needs to be source familiarity. So the message should be designed by a source 
that is familiar and trustworthy. And this is taken from the research that I did on websites. Okay, If IBM designs a web page, uh, they are typically going to be considered credible. If Amazon designs a web page, they're typically going to be, that web page is typically going to be considered credible. Why? Well, because people are familiar with those brands and they trust those brands. The same thing has to go with, with uh, Facebook posts. It has to be designed by a trusted source, if at all possible, by a familiar source, even if not trusted, which is interesting, especially on websites. They don't have to necessarily trust it. They just have to be familiar with it. If they've never heard of that sponsor, well, that, that reduces credibility quite a bit. Well, how do we do this? Um, you can ensure that the source is easily recognizable. So the name of the sponsor should be prominent. This is all taken directly from, from web, the web studies that I did. Ensure that the source is easily recognized. So the name of the sponsor should be prominent. Anchoring image, so the uh, profile picture, especially when it comes to Facebook, should be easily recognizable. It should be clear. It should be present. And it should be familiar. So a logo. IBM, for example, brands that are stuff with, with, uh, with their logo. And I apologize for bringing up IBM. I don't know why I've got, I have IBM on the mind. I'm not in the tank for them. I don't work for them anymore. But they just seem to be coming to mind very frequently. But in any case, people are very familiar with the IBM logo. Same thing goes with Amazon and even Facebook itself. So if that happens to be <clears throat> the image, uh, the, the image picture, the profile picture uh, <clears throat> for that post, It'll be easily recognizable and more apt, should be more apt to be credible. And finally, the, there needs to, the URL needs the sponsor's domain. So there shouldn't be any use of bit.ly or, <clears throat> excuse me, any shortened URL. People need to see uh, Amazon.com, Facebook.com, IBM.com, and then the rest of the URL um, in order to believe it because that helps build up that credibility for brand recognition and source familiarity. Next, we need to ensure trust in the sharing individual. So is the person that's sharing the actual post familiar and liked by the community? That's kind of hard to judge because individual profiles are individual profiles. However, there could be influencers within the community that could share that information that perhaps an organization that's sharing crisis or emergency information can get those people to share. So as people within a community uh, or network influence who can share the information. So is it a prominent business figure, a local mayor, a local news anchor? These are people that perhaps are trusted, perhaps are familiar, that if they shared the information from the sponsoring organization uh, about the crisis, then it is more apt to be believed because they're the ones that shared it. So enlisting those people would be a really, really good move by some type of by the organization who's putting out the communication. Also, are there entities with community or network influence who can share the information? So police departments, traditional news organizations, government pages, those types of organizations, which again are familiar, which are trusted, if they can share the information as well. So obviously a really good step here if, you're, if you need to put out crisis communication is to ensure that you're getting that communication to these type of people, to influencers as well as community organizations that can help share that information. Okay. Now this does sort of take away from the no gatekeepers, no third party needed uh, part of, of Facebook, but I think the, the trade-off is that it raises credibility so much to make it super important. Finally, can the message be shared to specific communities? So to Facebook groups. I know in the the city I live in, Las Cruces, we have a Las Cruces Community Watch group on Facebook, and it has about 25 to 30,000 members, which is pretty strong. And I think you could probably find groups and organizations like that within every community. So ensuring that you get it to those groups specifically by sharing it to them or by uh, telling the administrators about it and letting them share it, again, it's it, there are communities that, that users already belong to, so there's going to be source familiarity, and it's, it's going to be uh, a much higher likelihood that people will trust that information. And then finally, ensuring trust in the message itself. The message, message should be free from basic errors that could compromise trust. So any little grammar error, any misspellings, all of those need to be checked. Make sure that, that there are none of those issues so that it's, there's a higher likelihood that information will be trusted.
So it should, and it should also be written clearly, concisely, and it should be focused about whatever the issue happens to be. It should stay on topic about the particular event, the crisis that that um, that we're we're discussing. And it should be easily understandable by the target audience. So who is your target audience? Just like anything else we do as technical writers, ensure that the target audience can understand it, that it's clear to them, that it's written at the level that they need, okay? And it should be timely and relevant. So obviously it shouldn't be about anything but the crisis or the event itself. If an organization is putting out information about the crisis or about the event, uh, but it really has nothing to do with the crisis or event, well, what happens? They quickly lose credibility, and their posts become uh, ignored by the user users and, 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 well, by the Facebook users, who we would hope would instead share that message and get the message out to the community. So looking forward, the next step in my own uh, research is to design an experiment to test these recommendations specifically for crisis communication. Uh, one thing I need to ask are, well, first of all, I need to find out if really if there's a lack of certain factors, if they're detrimental to the post credibility. I started this out with the assumption that they were, that if an organization, uh, that an organization would have an uphill battle in trying to share, trying to become credible through Facebook. I don't know if that's true or not. So that's really the first thing that I need to, I need to research and test. Secondly, if fixed, if there are those factors, if, if they're fixed, based on the recommendations that I made from previous studies and from my own studies, uh, will it increase the perceived credibility of that, of that message? I think it will. I hope it will. But I think most importantly, it's important. Well, excuse me. Uh, most importantly, it's urgent for us to find out because this platform is so big and it's so relied on by so many people for information that it becomes the perfect way to disseminate this crisis communication. Thank you for your for your uh, for your attention. I appreciate it, and uh, I welcome any questions that you might have. There's my email address uh, at NMSU. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and uh, and thank you.